Move over, Die Hard. We've got the latest, not really a Christmas movie, Christmas movie. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of my coverage of the 2023 Sundance Film Festival, today I'm going to be talking about the 2023 psychological thriller Eileen, which will be released in theaters on December 1st before opening wide on December 8th. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. Content. Eileen stars Thomas and Mackenzie, Anne Hathaway, and Shea Wiggum, and was directed by William Oldroyd. Based on Otessa Moshveg's 2015 novel of the same name and set in 1960s Boston, it tells the story of shy prison secretary Eileen and the changes she experiences after a new staff member arrives. You know how sometimes you can just tell that you're gonna like a movie? Maybe it's the genre, maybe it's the actors or the director, maybe you have some sort of pre-existing connection with the material, or maybe the story just sounds good to you. Obviously, the more information you have on the front end, the more likely you're gonna get that feeling of, I'm gonna like this, correct. But there's something uniquely satisfying about knowing you're gonna like a movie and then actually liking it as much as expected when you initially had very little to go on. It doesn't happen often, but it happened for me with Eileen. I have never read the book, had never even heard of the book before the movie, and was basing everything on a two-sentence premise blurb, but this was one of my most anticipated films of Sundance this year, and it ended up being one of my favorites at the festival. Like all my reviews, this is gonna be spoiler-free, so you don't have to worry, but I would advise you to avoid looking into this film too much before seeing it. The trailer is moderately safe and doesn't hit you with any specific plot or story spoilers, but it does reveal a few character things. And this is a movie that I think will be most impactful and most effective if you go in knowing as little about the actual story as possible. With that said, it's a good story. It's really captivating and interesting the way everything comes together. There are no frills or pretension here. It just hooks you with a little bit of mystery, a little bit of dark intrigue, and a lot of period piece style. Set in the early 60s, this film is loaded with excellent production design and costumes. It certainly oozes a 60s feel without being stereotypical, but it's also got this older, classier feel to it too, largely thanks to the noir influences that creep into both the story and the style. Eileen has got an enthralling and beguiling plot, but a huge part of what makes this film as good as it is comes from its performances. There are a few secondary characters that are made very memorable by some impressive performances, most notably by Shea Wiggum and Marin Ireland in comparatively small roles, but the real character focus and performance standouts come in the form of Thomas and Mackenzie and Anne Hathaway, as Eileen and Rebecca respectively. I think Hathaway is bound to garner the majority of attention and praise here because she's got a much flashier role. There's a very classic Hollywood movie star quality to Rebecca. She's glamorous and mysterious and seductive and persuasive, so much like the character Eileen, we as the audience find ourselves drawn to her. But I think Eileen and Thomas and Mackenzie's performance is just as interesting, maybe more so. She's mousy and depressed and lonely and constantly put down by herself and others. So when we get this intersection of these two very different personalities, some interesting stuff happens. Mackenzie and Hathaway have very palpable chemistry with one another, and it's really interesting to watch that chemistry morph into different forms as the film progresses and starts to shift in tone. Speaking of shifting, what a ride this film is. This movie is so many things, both in sequence but also at the same time. First and foremost, Eileen is a thriller. It sets that stage from the outset with this air of mystery. It's dark and gloomy and very noirish. There's this uncomfortable quality to the family drama elements, but the film's also surprisingly funny. Darkly, sometimes even morbidly so, but it works with these characters. So the film's got this dark thriller vibe to it, but it shifts into something that's, dare I say, cute? 
you're gonna find yourself wanting to smile and aw at Thomas and Mackenzie's character Eileen as the relationship with Rebecca blossoms and advances. Her awkwardness is really natural and endearing, so there's this pleasantness to watching them together. The story has many of the hallmarks of a subdued romantic comedy, and it's almost enough to make you forget that the movie's a thriller, so much so that I think most people are gonna be taken aback by the third act tonal shift. It gets dark, very, very dark, and in the moment, it does feel like a pretty sudden shift. I think our experience with that is meant to mirror what one of the characters is experiencing in the moment, but I will say that as the third act plays out, the tonal shift feels less and less out of the blue, because it keeps threading back to some of the darker elements from the beginning of the story. I suspect it's going to be a fairly divisive aspect of the film, but I think it's going to be one that people appreciate more on rewatch. Because the film does carefully set things up in advance, and plants its tonal seeds early on. So I think people will find that the unexpected third act shift isn't quite as unexpected as it initially seemed. Eileen is certainly not without its faults. I will say that the ending, the very ending of the film, is underwhelming. This doesn't have anything to do with that third act tonal shift I was talking about, or even really the events and decisions that take place at the end of the film. It's just that the story sort of fizzles out. It stops at a point that feels weird, and not in an intriguing, leaves you wondering kind of way, but rather in an abrupt, unfinished thought kind of way. So while the ending left something to be desired, everything that came before it just worked. It's the kind of film that'll stick with you long after you finish watching. The characters, the darkness, the manipulation and lies. I know this could be said about every movie, but with its odd blend of tones and story components, Eileen is really not going to be a film for everyone. But those who like it, those who get it and feel it, are going to really like it. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is the story. As somebody who hasn't read the book, I had some ideas about what this film was going to be, but I certainly didn't expect things to take the turns that they actually did here. This was such an interesting, twisty story, with a lot of character moments, but also a captivating mystery and overall plot. I didn't love the very end of it, but this is definitely the type of story that's going to yield satisfying rewatches, if only because of all the breadcrumbs the well-crafted script left for us to follow. The second pro has got to be the performances. The secondary characters are great with their fairly small roles, but the two standouts here, unsurprisingly, are Anne Hathaway and Thomas and Mackenzie as Rebecca and Eileen, respectively. Hathaway demands attention with her scene-filling role as the confident and mysterious Rebecca. She brings a very classic movie star presence to things, and an ambiguousness to her motivations and intentions. Mackenzie's Eileen is the exact opposite, a downtrodden loner, shy and unconfident. That is until Rebecca notices her. The change this sparks reverberates through the film, resulting in an equally interesting character. Hathaway and Mackenzie have great chemistry together, cute and romantic, but also dark and dangerous at the same time. Speaking of which, pro number three is the tone, including the third act tonal shift. I realize that this is going to be a divisive aspect of the film. Some people, like me, will enjoy it, while it'll go straight to the top of the cons list for many others. It's definitely a very broad blend. Part gloomy noir, part romance, part dark comedy, part thriller. It's got psychological components and corporeal ones, mixing everything up into a uniquely satisfying blend. With the development of the relationship between Eileen and Rebecca, and some of the more humorous moments, it's easy to forget the dark thriller setup to the story, which will likely make the third act shift feel more stark and sudden than it should, but I think it works well in the context of the story. On the con side, the biggest issue is the ending. This is spoiler free, so I'll be keeping this very vague, but it was a bit unsatisfying. This has nothing to do with the tonal shift of the third act, but rather the abruptness of the ending. I realize that many stories go for an open-ended finale, sometimes leaving many plot threads hanging, but this feels more like the story just stopped. I didn't think the events of the ending were bad, it just felt weird and like the story wasn't actually over. 
but then the credits rolled. I'm not sure if this is a case of strange book to film adaptation, but for the movie at least, this ending could have used a little tweaking to feel more like an actual ending. Before I give you my rating recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Eileen or any of the films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Eileen four out of five paws. It's a fascinating mix of genres and tones, blending cute rom-com with dark thriller and humor with gut-churning depravity. The third act shift will be divisive, and the ending doesn't feel like a proper ending, but the performances, 60s setting, and psychological themes make for a truly captivating film. I would recommend Eileen to people who enjoy unexpected thrillers. It's a bit difficult to talk about aspects of this film in a spoiler-free setting, but fans of Alfred Hitchcock will probably appreciate this one. It's a darker story with a bigger genre and tonal jump than most of the Master of Suspense's output, but it feels like the type of story he would have wanted to adapt. Fans of Anne Hathaway, Thomas McKenzie, and or sapphic pining will have plenty to enjoy here as well. If you liked Eileen, I would recommend Carol. I suspect many people are going to pick up on this, but with the core relationship and the personality similarities between the film's characters, it's hard not to make the comparison. The plots are vastly different, but both films share in an air of longing and feature some captivating performances and strong chemistry. If you liked the twistiness of the story and want another film that blends romance, deception, and mystery, you should check out Vertigo. One of Alfred Hitchcock's most popular films, this stylish psychological thriller is a twist-filled enigma that gets better with each rewatch. And if you want another recent genre-blending thriller, you might want to watch Last Night in Soho. This is another 60s set period piece, starring a shy and reserved Thomas and McKenzie who becomes obsessed with a mysterious blonde woman. This film combines psychological thriller, sci-fi, and giallo to craft another slick and twisty story. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Eileen? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what movie features the most unexpected third act shift? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.